Guys, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Yeah, we have a couch especially for you guys because <laughs> you spent a lot of time together. You're 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 friends. Yeah. We are friends. So so <laughs> few. Yeah. A few. <laughs> um, Laura Lee, I can say DJ, DJ. Okay. Mark. Um, you're all from Houston, Texas. That's yes. correct. Geographically, uh, where are you guys from musically? Let's start with you. Ooh. I'm from the gospel church, so that's where I got all my home training start from. Yeah, I started off playing drums in church when I was about seven. Seven? Seven. Wow. Seven young. Until when? Now. Really? <laughs> yeah. You still play in church? I still play. I play organ now, but yeah. You play, play organ in church? Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. And, and you? Um, I had a crazy childhood, and I lived with several different families growing up. So I kind of have a lot. My mom listened to a lot of like Latin music, and my dad liked British rock and roll. Um, but then I grew up on 90s R&B. So I'm kind of all over the place, but in a really good way. You? Uh, <sighs> Where to start? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, played in a lot of different types of bands in my teenage years, mm. uh, but also at the same time started playing jazz and R&B and started getting a lot more work in that scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and through that started playing at church and that's where I met DJ. Same church? Yeah. Houston, Texas. So there's a lot of like similar like musical DNA, um, but at the same time around my late teens I started hanging out with more DJs and getting into more like digging for other types of music yeah. that I wasn't hearing in the bands that I was in. Okay. Yeah. So the two of you uh, know each other for a long time playing in church together mm -hmm. and then you joined at a certain and point. And then I joined. Um, before I get to the how you came <laughs> together, just for me, because I'm a church girl, so, so it makes me wonder, like when I listen to your music and the type of church that I know, uh -huh. also in Houston, Texas, what kind of, just paint a picture real quick, what kind of church are we talking about? So the church that we played at together was St. John's downtown. Yeah. Uh, famously known because Beyonce grew up there. Beyonce. Yeah, Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, she grew up there and, uh, you know, started singing there when she was a young child. Her and I believe Kelly Rowland Kelly was also there. Uh, and, yeah. So this yeah, is a funky it's church. A, it is a yeah. funky, <laughs> funky church. They do a lot for the homeless community uh, there in downtown Houston. It's really beautiful and a lot of uh, people that are in recovery, too, from alcohol and drug abuse wow. uh, go there. And it's a safe place. Wow. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. So, oh, we yeah. always go when we, when we go back to Houston. Yeah. Go back to the, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, all right. Hmm. Then you came. Yeah, I came. How? I Where met. from? <laughs> Where did I come from? Because <laughs> um, we're would... talking about a church unity here, and yeah. then... Yeah, this is, yeah, totally separate. I was going to school for art history and working at museums, and one of my work colleagues uh, took me to his house for lunch and he lived with Mark and we got to their house and Mark was watching a documentary on Afghani music and I was studying art from that part of the world mm. so it was so weird to meet somebody randomly that was really interested in a very similar thing just like and it's really niche meant to be yeah yeah so yeah, we became so. friends <laughs> and they would um, have burgers after church rehearsal every Tuesday so I crashed one Tuesday and then I never left. Aww. So we had dinner every Tuesday night for three years before we ever started a band. Yeah. A band. Uh -huh. Okay, let's get to, because time is running on us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the burgers and then um, um, three years and then the band. Yeah. Krungbing. Yeah. Krungbing. yeah. Tell me about the birth of Krungbing because it's not only the name of your band, it, it has become a style. I guess so. Yeah. And it's awesome. so. But it's so specific, you know, like, I mean, it's, it's, it means airplane in Thai. Yeah. That's pretty specific. <laughs> and then you were all um, inspired by Thai funk from the 60s and the 70s, mm -hmm. which is also pretty specific. Yeah. So how, how, what was, the, how was the birth of, of Crumbin? I mean, it's just like how I grew up with DJs and learning how to like dig for music. I mean, the birth of the internet made that a whole lot easier. Mm. So I was on different blogs and finding stuff, and then I found this little sidebar and took me to this one blog that is specialized in Thai music like Luk Tung and Mulam and all these different like shadow music and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, that stuff is so cold. <laughs> so I couldn't stop listening to it. Yeah. Um, we would listen to it every single day. We'd listen to it on the way out to the barn to go rehearse or record stuff. And 
It's not like we were really intentionally trying to sound that way. It's just mm -hmm. kind of, that's what we were listening to. Mm -hmm. So it kind of seeped into all the other stuff that we were already doing. Ah, okay. If you put something into your subconscious, it will yeah. it'll come yeah. out. But it's kind of special that you all liked it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what are the odds that also you like the sound of Thai? I think because <laughs> Thai music from that point in time was influenced by funk that was going on in America at the mm -hmm. time. So a lot of it sounded to me like James Brown, right. both with ah, Thai singers and just uh, like an Asian influence yeah, in a yeah, way. Yeah. So I'm glad they, they introduced it to me because I didn't know anything about it. And I was like, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have like the, the gospel, uh, the gospel sort of hip hop drummer yeah. with the art girl that started playing <laughs> bass yeah. and the sort of the cray digger world music connoisseur. Yeah. Uh, I'm that's, not going to claim that. But. <laughs> that's the best. That's pretty working. good. Yeah, that's the best description of us. Yeah. yeah. And then um, um, you guys not only like this, this, this Thai funk music, but you, you tapped onto a lot of other styles like Chinese funk, mm -hmm. Zouk, Afghan mm, yeah. music, all of these things. So, so I think my question is like, what is so appealing to this global music from that era there what is there I mean, what's it's kind of a specific era it's usually like from like maybe mid 70s to like mid 80s because everything's kind of the world hadn't gone digital just yet yeah the texture's so the texture's nice is really really nice everything's kind of thumpy and like it's right there and everybody's really funky like everyone all over the world it's right funky. Yeah. yeah it was the, it was just like <laughs> the right time of technology and not the right time but the time yeah. that i think yeah. we all really appreciate and most stuff was still being recorded to tape so yeah. it sounds really pleasing and warm and warm sounds yeah. good yeah <laughs> and it, and it and to me I, I always call it the golden era of, of funk soul jazz and, and pretty much everything yeah cuz it, it it almost feels like whether people were from morocco or or from i don't know where they were all Everybody. feeling yeah. the same yeah, sort yeah, of. Yeah. yeah. Everybody was funky. Yeah. Everybody was funky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now another thing, <laughs> um, um, knowing all this, this different kinds of music in different kinds of languages and different kinds of cultures, and often quite obscure. Yet the music you create has this very whew, chill feeling. You know, this chill yeah. vibe. Do you? Um, dive into like the, the 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 cultural background or the the background of these tracks. How do you sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but connecting with the chill vibe. I mean, we record in a barn, so it's that's about as how chill yeah. as you can get. I think it's the atmosphere that we yeah. record in that has that presence, because we're in the middle of you know just space. That's from the farm. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you mentioned the barn. Yeah. Tell me about the barn. Um, what, <laughs> where, where, let's where? start. Where's the barn? The barn is in Burton, Texas, which is kind of halfway between Houston and Austin. Okay, yeah. so you really have to set an appointment to go there. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's an hour and a half, which in Texas time isn't that long. Yeah, okay. yeah you but, get in the car and drive. And, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. When you record in the barn, who's your audience? Cows. Cows. Literally. Yeah. 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 Them. Yeah. Them. Literally yeah. them. And they, they huddle like that and watch. Sometimes they like sit in a meeting and watch and it's the best. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, and they give you like a little nod like this is you're going this the right good. direction. Yeah. yeah. going in the wrong nope. direction, they'll go away. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and what is so special about recording there? Do you have like your own style or, or, or process of recording that fits with the barn? Yeah. yeah it's really just a big empty building. And it is. They kind of bring in all the gear and... Uh, well, they, I mean, you know, Steve. Steve brings our, in our, our engineer, Steve Christensen. Yeah. He's amazing. Amazing. He brings in his whole rig and mics everything up. Nothing is treated in the barn as far as yeah, it's just acoustical treatment. It's curated steel walls. Uh, dirt floors. Dirt yeah. floors. There are bees. Bees. There are wasps, mice. Mice. Bees and mice. Yeah. 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 But it's sort of like with the beauty of the natural environment of it, you're going to get bees yeah. and yeah. things like that. So. You know, there's complications, but in the best way, because then you're going to get sort of imperfect perfection. Yeah. And that, that's what you like. That's what we like. Yeah. yeah. So if you had to sort of um, narrow down what the barn does to your music, how would you say that? I think like when you're in a studio, it's so controlled and so quiet um, that you kind of feel the need to fill up the space. Yeah. Whereas in the barn, there's so many little noises happening, like birds or wind or cows or whatever. You're like, 
I don't need to fill up the space because there's already something beautiful happening. So you just kind of leave that. Yeah. You know? Wow. Okay, you have a, a, a new album out, Con Todo uh, El Mundo. Yes. A lot of influences uh, on there as well. Um, uh, what's the next song you're going to do? Uh, we're going to do Friday morning. Friday morning. Um, for, for the people, uh, you guys on your website, you are air crung. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you insert um, a, a destination where you want to go, you get like songs that you guys curated. Yeah, yeah. curated. Um, so this program is on Sunday morning. So, so can I, can we have like sort of a deal that you create like a little, like a mini playlist for, for our Sunday viewers. morning Sunday playlist. Sunday morning playlist. playlist, yeah, of course. They can find it on our website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will be great. Krongbin, well, I'm, I'm so happy you were here. We're going to listen to you guys. Good Thank luck you. with everything. Thank you. And I'm such a fan as well of you. Uh, you that's so nice to hear. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to listen to you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you.